Hi, this is Em, and today I would like to do a new video, and we are moving into using wet mediums with pressed flowers and foliage. And if you have missed my video about dry mediums, which I define as laminates, contact paper, glass, packing tape, things like that, I'll put a link down below. And as we move into the wet mediums, I define wet mediums um, in two versions. One is what I call the one-part mediums and then the two-part mediums. One-part mediums, of course, would be things like glue, varnish, sprays, um, gl gloss mediums, things that you would use in artwork. Two parts I would define as uh, two-part epoxy glues, polyurethane glues, resins, uh, things like that. And right now I'm really obsessed with and I am getting into uh, polymer clay. And first let me make a comment about wet mediums and then I'll go back to the polymer clay situation. The subject for today is wet mediums and now how they affect the substrate of the pressed flowers and foliage. And for example here, clay and resin. Substrate being what is the background, in this case this is clay, and in this case, this was um, paper with some glitter nail polish. This was paper. All of these are clay. Substrate on this was glass. This was, I already talked about that, and this was paper. The substrate here was nothing. This is just flowers. And again, there was no substrate. It was, it was strictly a, a two-part medium. The reason why this is important is what we're going to talk about today. It's the effect that the wet medium can have on the flowers and foliage. It, it doesn't necessarily apply to paper so much, but it is something to think about when you move into wet mediums. Just like we had to think about how color enhancing flowers and foliage would affect the adhesives used on packing tape and contact paper and things like that for bleeding that I went into on that video. You've got different issues when you're using wet mediums with, with um, pressed flowers. So for example, let me, let me show you what we're, we're testing today. These are clay tiles over here and I'm going to go into more detail in a minute. Let me put this down to where you can see it. I want you to play a guessing game with me. These tiles here I did before the tests that we're going to go over here in a, in a minute. And this tile in particular, and I don't know if you can see it, but you see how it bled around here? See that brownish tinge? Well, in the test that you'll see, there's some mediums that cause this effect. And so if you don't want this effect, you're not going to want to use those wet mediums on polyver clay with flowers. You're just, you're just not. All of these I did before the tests with varying results. And after we go through the different mediums, I will show you the results. But I want you to look at this before the tests. And then look at this after the test. And when you see the results, think to yourself, what did she use on here that made this turn out so wonderful? No ghosting, no brown. I used the same leaf here that I did here. Same here, no ghosting. These have all had an application put over the top, and this one. So we'll talk more about that in a minute, but I want you to keep this in mind as we move forward. The other thing why it's important, and we're not really going into resins today, but I, I want to show you the another thing that it's important. This is the same flower. Make sure I'm on camera here. This is the same flower as this flower. This flower had a different wet medium put on the top before I put an epoxy sticker on it. This one 
I don't even remember what I put on it, which is why I want to do these tests and memorialize in one video. This is the look I'm going for, where you see the flowers. They're not all faded and translucent out. The color is still there, and they look really nice. This is not the look that I'm going for. See how it's turned brown, and it's done that that bleeding of discoloration situation. Same here. Now this is paper, and I put the pressed flowers on top, and I put the resin on top of that, and I, whatever I protected the pressed flowers with before I put the resin on, you can see what happened. Again, it, it just really, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It just really grated or browned it out. And again, if you're looking for a vintage look, then you probably may want this this outcome. If you don't want a vintage look, then then it, that's why you need to know how different mediums affect different substrates. This one is this is glass on the back. And the flowers are on the glass. Then I protected the flowers, and then I put resin over the flowers, and then I I um, soldered the sides. Okay. These here is, is not a uh, jewelry video today, but I just want to show you back to the looks that I'm going for. This is what I'm going for, is when you ha I embed a flower in resin, for example, and the flower doesn't go translucent or lose all of its color or go brown. This is what I'm looking for. Same here. This is just resin on top of the petals with a Swarovski crystal and a little charm. Both of these have been color enhanced and they have been protected. And I think I protected these with probably nail polish. Nail polish is my go-to um, protectant for a lot of things. Except for when I started getting into polymer clay, I was reading that don't use nail polish in polymer clay because it, it, it causes it to go um, sticky. So there's a lot more considerations for polymer clay that I wasn't aware of until the foray that I'm going through right now. So some of the techniques that I used for um, things that I did before might not apply to polymer clay. But these are the types of outcomes that I, that I find uh, to be more desirable for me personally, but everybody has their own taste. So having said that, I'm going to put these aside for a minute. And now we're going to go into the foray into polymer clay and press flowers. And I'm going to give you a quick background story, so if you don't want to listen to this part, fast forward a little bit until you see these tubs move out of the way. Um, I've had these two tubs of polymer clay for a couple of years. Oh. Let me uh, prop something up under here so you don't get the glare. Excuse me. Okay. So... I'll just take the lid off. Excuse me while we... Glare is very annoying. That should cut down a little bit. Alright, so I bought these two tubs of polymer clay a couple of years ago. And at the time, I, because I was doing jewelry, I thought that I would like to see about adding some polymer clay jewelry to my line. And I saw all those people doing all those beautiful canes on the internet, and I thought, I want to try that, because, you know, I want to try everything at least once. And so I bought these sample packs of Primo, and you can see I've hardly used any of it, because I, I discovered very, very quickly that between the confines of my bread and butter part of my business, which is men's wet shaving, and then um, my preference for wood and metal and resin and stained glass, um, I just didn't want to take the time to devote to polymer clay for jewelry. 
and also polymer clay in and of itself wasn't really the look that I was going for. So I took these tubs and put the lid on them and put them back on the shelf and that's where they sat for two years. At least the good news is that polymer clay doesn't go bad and it's, you know, there's still nothing wrong with it and I can use it. So for the clay tiles that I'm working on now, I'm not actually using the Primo. I'm, I'm, I'm hoarding it. I'm saving it because it is a little firmer and I'm using it more for, uh, uh, you know, the embroidery type of things where you make the little flowers and do, do detailed work. That's what I'll use these, uh, these clays for. So having said that, I'm going to put these away. I just wanted to do a little quick. Here's where I was with polymer clay sat on the shelf for a couple of years and here's where I am today and why. So today I'm using for the clay tiles I'm using Sculpey 3 and I'm using original Sculpey and actually I'm preferring the original Sculpey right now. Original Sculpey is a little bit well, these are both softer than the Primo, and I think this one's even softer than the Sculpey 3. But it's the price. I figure if I'm going to do clay tiles, um, I have to watch the budget a little bit. And now that I've gotten used to using these two clays, uh, I'm not having a problem with them. I can do, do what I need to do uh, just fine. I'm leaning towards white. I also bought some of the terracotta. And that way I figure with white I can color and I can paint and I can tint and I can do whatever I want as long as it's polymer clay friendly with wet tiles. I can either do it before I bake it or I can do it after. And um, this isn't really a, a polymer clay tutorial so I'm not really going to go into detail about those techniques in this video except to say that this is what I'm using for the tiles and the experiments that you're going to be seeing today. And the reason why I got into doing polymer clay tiles is because I was thinking about my goals for the new year a couple of months ago, and I was saying, geez, I've got this polymer clay sitting on my shelf and one of my goals this year is to use products that I have sitting in drawers and sitting on the shelf and do something with them because like some of you who may be watching um I can't be the only one that hoards I go out and I buy something and then I daydream about using it and then it sits on the shelf or I use it once and it sits on the shelf well this year I want to actually um, do more with things. So I was thinking about the polymer clay that was on the shelf and I thought what can I do with it? So I went on YouTube and I was just foraging around for uh, I think I searched something like ideas for polymer clay because I and I knew jewelry was not the answer for me personally. And I stumbled across this channel by Sarah, um, My Serenity Crafts. And the gal's name's Sarah and I'll put a link down below and she has quite an extensive repertoire of uh, polymer clay tile videos and I just went oh wow I mean I was drooling because they're so beautiful her work is outstanding and uh, I really appreciate the fact that she um, does it in real time she shows what she does she explains her thought process and uh, I, I really appreciate learning that way I like videos that show me because if someone does it in real time and they're talking about the thought process, if I want that level of details, it's there. If I'm in a hurry and I just want to cut to the chase, then I can scrub along the timeline. I can move along the timeline. I can, I can fast forward the video from the speed setting on the timeline. So I'm in complete control as the viewer when someone does something in real time. So I don't look at a real time video such as what I'm doing here or what, what someone like Sarah does and think, oh, geez, how boring. I look at it as, oh, I can see it down to the 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 very detailed level if I want or I can scrub along the timeline so I'm in control so that's why I like to do real time videos and and I thank Sarah for that um, I also want to do a shout out to uh, Patty Tooley Parish who also has some good videos on polymer clay tiles and so I'll put a link to her channel and then another uh, channel that was instrumental in in my new foray into polymer clay and you know things to do's and don'ts of products to use on polymer clay is 
um, the Polymer Clay Tutor, and I'll also put a link to her channel. And uh, so those are probably the three primary channels that I've been watching over the last couple of months as I've been um, playing around with uh, polymer clay tiles. And I have made a number of tiles. And if you watch Sarah's, Sarah's video, they're more the standard things that you see Sarah and Patty and, and a lot of other tile makers do. But because I specialize or I tend to lean towards pressed flowers and foliage, the next question always becomes, can I use flowers and foliage? So, so that is what I wanted to know. And along with the question of can I use flower and foliage becomes the next question, which is once I do, what am I going to put on it? So, for example, this tile this tile has had the flowers put on raw clay and I embedded a couple of little uh, seed beads and then I baked it and you can see this turned out very nicely it's down enough into the clay that it held down in there but I haven't put anything on the top and it needs some sort of protective coating so right now this is just raw flowers on cooked clay. This one, same thing. Raw flowers on, or raw uh, flowers embedded onto uh, raw clay and then cooked. So all the tiles that were on that other uh, cardboard that I showed you a minute ago, minute ago um, have been baked. Now, here is I'm going to move the jewelry out of the way because we're not talking about jewelry today and it's laying around so let me get that out of here. Okay, we're done with, with jewelry conversation for today. Um, so this is flowers on clay, no protection. This was done before the tests. So I put the flowers on the, the raw clay, I baked it. These two then had future and then dimensional magic put on top. And so you can see what that did. See how shiny those are? So the, and it's because of the dimensional magic that makes them shiny because that's dimensional magic because it's a shiny medium. This one is the one that we are trying to avoid. And this one was, oh, I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell you what this one was uh, at the end of the video because I want you to guess. This was, we're kind of doing a process of elimination because if I show you what these are, then you'll already know. So maybe I'll stop doing that. Okay, I'm going to wait. This was polymer clay baked with the flowers and then the finish on top. So we're going to go into what I tested. Okay, you're going to see me talk about, and I'm only going to mention it once because when, if you want to uh, refer back, just come back to this section. But some of the things that I tested uh, was... Of special mention, you've seen me talk about this before. I love my two times Rust Oleum. I've got it in gloss, clear, and matte. Okay. Love, love, love that stuff. The Verithene I'm not using on the flowers, but I'm going to give it an honorable mention only because, uh, and I have it in gloss and uh, gloss and what's oh, gloss and satin, only because what I'm doing with that is. Um, when I bake the polymer clay, I do like to put a little bit of something on and I'm mostly using the satin. And what I'm doing is, and these are non-flower tiles, these are just regular polymer clay that have perfect pearls or other, uh, you know, pastels or other things on it. And I'm using the, I'm spraying it on and then I am show you what I'm doing. This is really uh, noteworthy. 
Okay. Polymer clay. Side note here. This has nothing to do with the pressed flower section segment of the video, but what I find with the spray varathane, because it's water-based, and I guess that's polymer clay compatible. I haven't had any problems with it. And so that's why I picked it up. But what happens is, and I don't know if I'm the only one that has this happened. Where did my pointer go? Is that it spatters. Let me, can you see that? Can you see how... See how on the the side furthest away from me it's speckled like an orange peel? Well that's what happens. That's how it sprays out of the jar and I, I can't get it to stop doing that. So when I go and I spray the tiles after they are cool out of the oven, it spatters. And it does the same thing with the satin, so that's just what it's just what it does. See? See the blotchiness on the side furthest away from me? So what I do is I spray them because I can do a whole swath of tiles at the same time. And then I take my finger, put down the can and right away take my finger and just rub real quick. And I can go through a bunch of tiles, just rub, 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 rub. And I can go through a whole bunch of tiles in a really short amount of time. Then I let them dry, then I put them away. So that's what I'm doing with the Verifit thing because I don't want to take the time to paint each tile individually. That's just too much time and too much effort. But I do want a little bit of protection on them and I do like the way that the satin looks. So once you use the finger technique and smooth it down, you can see that the blotchiness goes away. So that's what I use the Verithane for. It's the only thing that I use the Verithane for. So when I went to the store the other day because I wanted to try a water-based uh, Verithane in the can, something that I could brush on, I went to the hardware store to buy some, and they don't have it in the can. The only thing that they had in the can was... Uh, that was equivalent that I've read about was the Minwax, the Minwax Polycrylic. So it's a water base. Uh, it's supposedly good, safe for uh, polymer clay. And so I picked up this little container and it is clear satin. I personally tend to lean toward a satin finish more than a high gloss in uh, probably the majority of situations, although I do like a high gloss sometimes, but I bought the satin. So back to uh, the finishes. All right, so we talked about the sprays and the Verithane that I don't use on, on flowers, but I do use it on, in general. Pledge Floor Care, you'll hear me talk about a lot about in the, in the tests and in my videos, you hear me refer to it as future. So anytime I say the word future, I'm talking about Pledge Floor Care, two times finish. I talk about tacky glue, Diamond glaze, Liquitex matte medium. Pay special attention to my comments about this. Delta clear gloss glaze. I don't even know if they make this anymore. Delta gloss exterior interior varnish. Americana Dura Clear Ultra Matte Finish. Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. Weld Bond. Perfect Paper Adhesive Gloss. Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. Glossy Accents, Nail Polish, and this is a base coat, top coat. Uh, I even tried Jacquard's Perlex Varnish. Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe uh, Water-Based Sealer Glue and Finish. Word about Mod Podge. Um, the only two Mod Podges that I personally use is the Dishwasher Safe 
and the matte. I love both these products and I use them a lot. I don't care for Mod Podge gloss. The matte doesn't seem to do brush strokes as badly as the gloss, which I find I just, it's not something that I can deal with. I can't deal with the brush strokes of the gloss very well. This isn't as bad. This one uh, does show brush strokes, but usually when I use this, after I do lay this down, I come in with the two times on top. So this combination together, um, the two times helps to smooth out the brush strokes. And I use this a lot in coasters. And the reason for that is because both of these are water resistant. Actually, they're waterproof because I've done um, uh, transfers, image transfers, where I've put it on Mod Podge and then followed up with the two times and I submerge them in water and they're waterproof in my test. And the other reason is they're both good to up to 200 degrees. If you read the information, it says, um, don't, uh, when heat, uh, not to exceed 200 degrees. Right there. And I think somewhere on here, it's the same. I don't know if it has the degrees on here. But it, you can put it in the dishwasher. Dries hard, no tack, top rack of the dishwasher. So I figure if it can go in the dishwasher um, and, and go through the heat of that. So when I'm doing uh, designer paper coasters, this is what I use. Because my tests have shown me that this is really the only combination that works for, for my purposes. So these are the Mod Podge. Um, this is tacky glue that I just thinned down with uh, some water. And you'll see a, a test thing that uses that. And then, of course, Elmer's glue. So I think that's it um, for those. And I have one more thing I want to mention. You'll also hear me talk about, whether it's in this video or other videos, it's called PC Wood Petrifier. And it says it's a wood hardener for rotted wood, uh, restore salvage, strengthen soft or rotted wood. It's kind of an acrylic-y type milky substance. And what I use it for, I use it for a lot of things. Um, mostly, although I, I do use it on wood, but because it penetrates in, I use it whenever I want a little, a little bit harder structure. And in one of the last videos I did not too long ago, I showed you... I showed you these uh, poppy seed heads that I said, who knew that they would skeletonize? And I had made the comment as I was showing them to you that they're hard, you know, that they dried pretty hard. Well, what I forgot at the time, and uh, I'll mention now that I showed you the polycrylic, is I actually put these in the polycrylic to give them a little bit more hardness. Um, this I dried in silica gel and I put some, I think I painted the polycrylic on here. I didn't submerge it. These I, I submerged in the polycrylic. This I used a paintbrush and painted it on and you have to be careful because it'll get, a lot of times flowers will get limp. So this is really a very laborious, I guess would be the, the, the best way to say it, uh, in trying to experiment with ways of, of making these things less brittle. And so I know I put polycrylic on here, and I'm not sure what else I did, but I know I did did stuff and experiment. But it's you know it's it's pretty good. Now these I haven't done anything to yet, but these would be candidates. I I dried these in the silica gel. These would be candidates for putting in the poly polyacrylic to um, make them so that they're not so. Um, well, right now I'll just use this as an example. Right now, see, they'll just they'll just fall apart. But once you put it in the polyacrylic, it will harden them up, and I want to see how hard it will will be because I really like these flowers, and I'd like to use. I have some ideas that I want to use these particular uh, kinds of um, florals for, and I want to see if the polyacrylic will help them to hold up for the purposes with which that I want to use them. Uh, these are a little bit more. Um, firm they don't really 
go away, but they are lifting off of the stem fairly easily, and I think the polyacrylic will uh, will help that. I've done other tests with florals and leaves with the polyacrylic, and it's it works pretty good. And if anybody knows what I can put on flowers and leaves to make them more solid, uh, besides a polyacrylic or something like that, um, please let me know in the comment sec section, because that's another hunt that I'm on, and so far um, I've tried several different mediums, and the polyacrylic won the tests, and I don't even have my visuals for those tests anymore, so I, I won't um, bore you with that particular situation, except to say that polyacrylic won the day in the four different things I tried. Um, I don't even remember now what they were, but anyway. All right, now for the whole, what we're here for. And that's the results. Okay, so when I showed you this one tile, that's a fail. This is what not, what I don't want to do. You might want to do it, but this is, this is my example of what I do not want and what I did before these tests. And so now here are the results. The first one I did was this guy. This is the the Ceramico Delta. And you see how it's ghosting. And I tried to use the same uh, leaf bits for the most part. It, it didn't hold out all the way, but for the most part I tried to use the same leaf bits. Um, but the Ceramico Delta is this one. And I don't want to go out of focus because this is important, so hopefully... Uh, this is the glaze medium and varnish. This is the, what is this? This is another glaze, this is glaze medium. This is Liquitex glaze medium for acrylics. And this is glaze medium and varnish. And this was also Liquitex. So one is their glaze medium and varnish and one was just their glaze medium. Uh, this one is, in all the tests that I did, this is the most shocking one of all, and I, I'm telling you, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I, I, my jaw actually dropped on this one. I was not expecting this, and it's totally not what I would have thought. This is the Liquitex Matte Medium. Remember earlier when I brought up the bottle of Liquitex Matte Medium, and I said, you know, keep this in your mind or focus on this? This, to me, is the is the biggest epic fail of all these tests, and and I... So now, I mean, except for maybe finding uses for it um, on paper or something, I, I, I won't be using that much anymore. Uh, and I really hadn't used it a lot anyway. This was a fairly new bottle uh, because mostly I was using the Mod Podge uh, matte medium. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe I'll get the Liquitex matte medium and see if I could use it as a replacement for the Mod Podge. But nope, it isn't going to happen. All right, so now then I did um, these guys. This is future. Now, well, first of all, let me say all these, in my opinion, uh, are fails. I, I wouldn't use any of these on, on the tiles with the clay tiles. I wouldn't use them on clay tiles uh, with flowers, and I would not use them to try to coat anything for resin application. Now, over here, this is future. And future, to me, is a pass. And, and you can't let this back half um, spoil the experiment because the, what, if, what affected with the, the future was the, the ink from the pen, not the flowers and the foliage. All my tests with future um, have been successful. So even though this pen doesn't go, excuse me, <clears throat> agree with the future, Flowers and foliage do in all my tests. So I give that a pass. Weld bond. Weld bond, um, and I just applied it with my finger. All of these have been applied with my finger. And I just applied it with my finger. This is weld bond. Um, it passes. And I really like it. It gives it kind of a satin finish. And... Uh, it flattens out. It doesn't go. It goes on milky, and it doesn't look like it'll flatten out, but it does. And then this one uh, over here 
is that perfect paper gloss. And that seems to do okay. And then this is, oh, this, oh, I already did a perfect paper. I did another perfect paper last night because I didn't think I had one. And I did, and this one turned out again. So yeah, I've had two tests now for paper. This is polyacrylic, what I showed you that I used to harden um, the uh, three-dimensional flowers. It does not uh, play well with polymer clay. And I just had this tiny little piece of leaf, but you can see it's all browned out. So um, polyacrylic is a fail. This is Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue uh, works fine as far as not browning it, but you'll see another test in a minute that, that would show you why I wouldn't, wouldn't use it as a top coat for uh, flowers on clay. This is tacky glue. I'm very happy with the tacky glue. There's, there's no residuals here. It lays down a fairly glossy finish, and uh, I like that. This is the Americana uh, DuraClear varnish. And it, you can see where it discolored. And then this is the Delta Ceramic Coat Varnish. And again, it's, it's got that brown ghosting. Over here, I have to turn this over because I started writing things on the back. Okay, so what do we have? No. Okay, this is, this is nail polish. Now, I know because I use nail polish for uh, resin application to protect flowers. I already knew nail polish works. Um, it lays down a sheen uh, and it I've never found it to discolor flowers. And I actually find nail polish, believe it or not, is the most successful medium uh, to put over flowers that I've found yet. Uh, and it holds true with the polymer clay. Only, uh, I understand from watching uh, uh, some of the video channels, and I think maybe even the polymer clay tutor, that um, nail polish causes polymer clay to, to go sticky. Now, I haven't found that to be true yet in my experience, but I, I, I'm, I'm new at this, and this has only been on here probably for a couple of weeks, so I don't know. Um, then this second one was, so show my short-term memory, this was the Minwax. Um, Minwax works. This next one was Dishwasher Mod Podge. That works. And then this is Future. Uh, is that Future? Yeah, this is Future. And we already know that works. This is um, the Perlex varnish. Does not work. Tack glue we know works. Some of these were, were retests. I thought, oh, if the tack glue worked over on one of these other tests, I want to double test it just to make sure. Uh, this other one over here on the end is, um, looks like Matte Mod Podge. So it held up to a second testing. Over here we have Dimensional Magic. Oh, okay, these are, these are like the one-part resins. This is Dimensional Magic, and of all the one-part resins, Dimensional Magic, um, okay, Dimensional Magic. This is matte. So, <laughs> okay. Glossy Accents, Matte Dura Clear, and Diamond Glaze. Okay. Glossy Accents, Matte Dura Clear, and Diamond Glaze. And dimensional magic. And what I've discovered to me, dimensional magic is the, is the best of these these three, glossy accent and dimensional magic. And then uh, these two, they kind of work, but you can see a little ghosting around here and a little tiny ghosting around here. Uh, this might have just a tad, but it's not enough that would bother me. I, I um, am using dimensional magic uh, if I really want a little bit more of a domed outcome. And of course you can see that this matte, uh, this matte DuraClear is, is not a contender. So now that I did those tests, I had to further make sure. And so now we've got these tiles. And I want to go first and I want to talk a minute about um, mediums. We talked about how 
clay is a little bit finicky, just like using resin over flowers is finicky. And using wet mediums, um, something that may not work on clay may be specific to clay and or resin, and it may work just fine on, for example, paper or wood or other surfaces. And so I did these three to prove a point. And what that point is, is, let me find the one. Okay, the matte Liquitex. Remember we talked about On clay, matte Liquitex is an epic, epic fail. Well, I used it on this wood piece and there's no ghosting at all. So I think if you use it on paper or other surfaces and that's what you have on hand, great. But not here. So this is matte Liquitex, same leaf, matte Liquitex. So definitely it's the clay reacting with the, with the medium, and the wood is not reacting with the medium. And the other thing that I want to show you is, and this was off the same, the same pansy, do you see how this petal is more washed out? I didn't color enhance any of these, by the way. None of, none of, none of these things. This was color and this was color enhanced, but none of these were color enhanced. And none of these were color enhanced. None of these were color enhanced. So just natural in and of itself, the, the, the Liquitex matte, uh, see how that's not as vibrant in its natural state as this is? And this is nail polish. Now you know why I love nail polish. Nail polish leaves things as close to their natural and or color enhanced state as anything I've ever found. That's, a, that's nail polish. And then this is matte Mod Podge. Okay. And no reaction on any of those. So what I did is once I found the things here that I thought were the most successful in the tests, I tested them again on some tiles just to double verify. So over here we have, uh, I glued the flowers with matte Mod Podge and then these have, then I put Dimensional Magic on top. And you can see there's, there is a, just a tad bit of ghosting but uh, not too bad. Like I say, I, I would use this in needed. Then I experimented and I wanted to know that um, if I wanted to dull down the shine because Dimensional Magic is pretty shiny. See how shiny that is? Um, I put Minwax on top and you can see I don't like the effect at all. The Minwax, uh, bleh. So I will not be putting Minwax on top of, uh, top of this to, to dull the shine. I, I didn't do that for this video, but I'm going to take that two times spray, the matter, the semi-gloss, and spray it on top of the Dimensional Magic and see what happens. I think that will be successful, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, this is uh, perfect paper. And if you want a glossy finish, I'm finding that the per perfect paper works fine. It, I didn't get any ghosting at all, and so we are so our tests for that were pretty successful. I took a, this is a non-color uh, enhanced flower. And it wasn't a, the best of colors when we started. Um, it held up fairly okay. This is tacky glue, thinned. Okay, I used a thin tacky glue. All of these I just applied with my finger. And uh, you can see that held up fine. This one was the Elmer's. Now the Elmer's in our tests over here was fine. So it doesn't, Elmer's didn't cause much of a ghosting, although I put a really thick layer on here, and I'm talking thick. And it did cause, not only did it, it cause these to go translucent and, you know, whatever, whatever you see here, whatever word you want to use. Um, we didn't get too much ghosting here a little bit. And this, there's no color enhancement here, so the, the, <clears throat> the bleeding that's happening with these flowers is natural. It's from the natural color of the flowers because I didn't do anything to them. So I won't be using Elmer's glue. 
all that's out. This is tacky glue. This one was watered down tacky glue. This is tacky glue full strength. We can put that in the wind column. Uh, this is dishwasher Mod Podge. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see, but you can you can see the brush strokes. And that's the only thing I don't like about the dishwasher Mod Podge. It works fine. It holds the color of the flowers fine. There's no bleeding. Uh, but it's, it's the strokes. Now I use my finger, so if I had a real soft uh, brush, varnish brush, it might work better. So it's a winner as far as playing well with the flowers. It's just got to get a better way to lay down the smoother finish. But I do know that you can take the uh, dishwasher Mod Podge and lay over two times spray and, and uh, fix that down. So I would keep that in the winter column knowing that we can uh, do something about that. This is Future. So we know that's a winner. This is Weld Bond. Oh. The weld bond affected the pansy a little bit, so it did affect the natural color of the pansy. It, dulled, it uh, kind of uh, washed it out. Uh, and same thing with the forget-me-not. This is uh, Minwax Polyclear. And there's a tad bit of ghosting, but I don't find it unacceptable. I would probably use it. Uh, this is... This is read my own writing. Matte Mod Podge. This is glue down with Matte Mod Podge. Matte Mod Podge on top. Mad Mod Mad Mad Matte Mod Podge works in in all situations. This is Diamond Glaze. And again, um, you can see where the, there's just a tad bit of ghosting, but in a pinch, I I would use it. This is oh, this is matte Mod Podge with a top coat of Future for whatever reason. I did that. That worked fine. So that's about it. So now that we've discussed all this. Let's go back to, we're going to be wrapping things up here in case you're wondering how much longer I'm going to go on about this. What did I do with this before my experiments versus this? Okay, this was flowers put on the raw clay then baked, same here, flowers put on the raw clay then baked. And then I put some uh, future over the flowers. Did I do that with these two? No. And then what, what really ruined it was um, I put dimensional magic on top. And we already know that dimensional magic is very shiny. So I, I coated it with dimensional magic. But I didn't like the shine. And so I took the Liquitex matte before I knew better. And I put a coat of that on top. And that's what caused this ghosting. And what I find interesting about this is even though I had protected the flowers with the dimensional magic, the Liquitex still affected it. You would think that the diamond glaze uh, or the dimensional magic would have protected the flowers as a barrier between the, the Liquitex matte and the, and the flowers, but it didn't. And, it, it, and it's bad. I mean, bad, bad, bad. So that's what this is. So it was dimensional magic, and then the liquid, liquid, uh, net liquid text mat on top. So we already talked about that. This is just dimensional magic, dimensional magic, and it's shiny. And I'll, I'll probably leave them that way because I, I'm, I'm okay with the results of both of these. I did um, the, the. Uh, the glitter accents was before I put the dimensional magic on, I brushed on future with a little bit of glitter mixed in. So if you want to use a, um, a glitter glue that has a really good consistency, just take a little bit of, take a brush with a little bit of the future, put a little bit of glitter in it, and then brush it on. It works really, really well if you want that technique. This was 
this is glossy accents. So that's that's what glossy accents does. I put uh, some sort of mat over this. I don't remember what now because I didn't write it down. This is before I was taking all these notes because I didn't realize that all these mediums had such an effect. Uh, this is diamond glaze. So here's here's the finish for the diamond. Here's the finish for the diamond glaze. And here's the finish for the glossy accents. I find diamond glaze to be the least shiny of the three. And I'm pretty happy with that too. Then I made the same mistake here. I laid down the um, the Liquitex mat, and I'm just not pleased with it. It it browned it out, and I actually, uh, since this is a test tile, it browned it out uh, because it was a kind of a, a bluish purple larkspur, and it browned it out. And so I took the tulip pen that I showed you in my color enhancement video, and the only re the only reason there's any purplish color on here at all is because of the tulip pen, because I, I just did the tulip pen right on the top of the liquid. Uh, the matte the matte medium and uh, I think I did the same thing here because it was all brown um, let's talk about what I consider successes this was what did I do here this was this was Looks like future and then dimensional magic and then oh this is a potpourri. This was future, then dimensional magic, and then matte medium, which didn't discolor these flowers, and then two times spray because the matte medium dulled it down so bad that I had to re-sheen it up with some of my two times spray. And uh the matte medium didn't affect that. This is this is weld bond. I put a little future down in here to soak into the flowers to harden the flowers up, and then I put weld bond on top. And the weld bond has a little bit of sheen, and the future had some of the glitter in it. So the glitter's from the future, and then I put weld bond on top. And it's it's um you can rub your fingers over it. It's not it's not going anywhere. It's not going to affect the flower. This one is um. Dimensional magic, and then a thin layer of the two times matte medium spray, and so I'm happy with that. That gives it kind of a uh, a matte, a sheeny matte finish, and the dimensional magic and the two times spray play well together. This was weld bond, so again I used. Um, I used Future to seal the flowers with the glitter, and then I put Weld Bond on top, and it's pretty shiny. I, I haven't decided if I'm going to cut the shine down or not, uh, but again, they're, they're not going anywhere. I really don't need to do anything else on this. This is after the test. This is just Future. And future in and of itself is pretty water resistant and waterproof, and you can do more than one layer of future, and these aren't going anywhere either. I'd, I'd put more protection on if I were doing this and, and for jewelry or something, but for tiles, for clay tiles. And then this is matte Mod Podge, and again, you know, it's not going anywhere. I haven't done anything with this, as I mentioned earlier, so. Uh, and I haven't done anything with this yet. This is the Glitter Future Wash and then Tacky Glue. This is Glitter Future Wash and Tacky Glue. And this is Tacky Glue and Matte two times. Okay. Hopefully no one's fallen asleep because this is very, very detailed. But let's wrap it up by saying I will be using Matte Mod Podge 
future weld bond and tacky glue and then the two time spray those those are going to be my go to mediums and dimensional magic uh, are going to be my go to mediums to put on top of clay tiles that have pressed flowers um, on them and now that I've done this video I've got another rack of clay tiles with flowers that I've already done that I uh, was waiting until I did this video to finish them up because in the next video we'll go into um, actually talking more about embedding pressed flowers on clay and baking it and some of the things that I've learned about that and then I, and then I hope to also be doing a process video where I will actually show you be putting the flowers on the unbaked tile and some of the techniques that I use as well as because of those discoveries I've also now am working on putting the pressed flowers on baked clay um, because there were some flowers that I was using on pre-baked clay that the baking wasn't satisfactory. It was drying them out and curling them up and doing all kinds of weird things. So so I have a lot to say about that subject. So if you're interested in hearing me talk about that, look forward to, um, uh, to a demonstration video and then some more detail about how to be successful using pressed flowers on your tiles. And uh, just realize that it does work. You can be successful. In my opinion, I think they're gorgeous. And if you're into doing any kind of um, mosaic tile work with, uh, with polymer clay, then I hope that you find the tests here to be of value to you. It will help you save money so that you don't try things that we now know just don't work at all. And you can focus your intention on testing for yourself the things that uh, we do think that works. And um, as always, do your own tests to make sure that something is successful for you. Because just because it's successful for me doesn't necessarily mean that, that you may be doing exactly the same or using the exact same application as I am. So before you go and ruin something you spend hours and hours doing, uh, do a little swatch sample first. So um, I think the only other thing that I want to do while this video is already going to be long is I had some other test sample swatches that I want to get on the record. And this is more housekeeping for me than anything. So you can tune me out now if you want. But this is... All right, when I say two times, I'm talking about those spray cans that say two times on it. Uh, by Rust-Oleum. Yeah, rust -Oleum. And all I did here was I just wanted to test the three finishes. This is the two times gloss. This is the two times satin here. And then this is the matte. So you can see the difference. Gloss, satin, matte. And I wanted to do that because as you heard me mention before, I love, love, love this medium. It's my go-to medium, and I just wanted to see. A, I want to test it to see if it's going to... This is on cooked polymer clay, and I haven't put anything else to protect the clay. So I just want to see over time if it's going to get... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Polymer clay tutor mentioned that if it's going to get sticky. So far, it's fine. Uh, but we'll see. It's only been on there for probably a week or two. Then this one is, again, it's over the raw tile. This is Minwax Polyclear, just to see the, how it shines up, how the sheen is on, on clay tile compared to the two times spray. And then this is Clear Gesso. And the only reason I put Clear Gesso on here is I'm also doing painting techniques. Huh? You know, I wanted to see if I could get watercolors on, on to uh, go on here, and I'm trying different uh, pencils and uh, different mediums. And so I thought, well, watercolor beads up on just regular baked clay. So I thought, well, I wonder if I put clear gesso down, if that would work. And that's another subject for another day, but that's, that's the reason why I did that. And then here's Minwax. Okay, what this was is this center section here, and here, this is Minwax by itself. And then 
This is future by itself. Uh, no, scratch that, I'm wrong. This is future by itself. Wait a second, what did I do? Yeah, this is, this is future by itself in the center. This is Winwex by itself in the center. Then I took future and I put it over the Minwax here. And I took Minwax and I put it over the future. And then, just to spice it up, I took nail polish and I put nail polish over the Minwax here and nail polish over the Minwax. Well, hopefully I said it all right. You can see my writing of what I didn't wear, but this is nail polish over Minwax over future. This is future over Minwax, Minwax over future. And then the center is by itself. And I just wanted, I just did that because I want to know how they play together. I want to know, are they going to get sticky? And what happens when I put one over another? Because like I said earlier in the video, sometimes something's not shiny enough and I want to make it more shiny. Sometimes something's too shiny and I want to dull it down. And so the second question besides what works with pressed flowers and foliage is um, when I do a medium, what mediums will play well together? And, uh, and, and so I already know that the two times plays well with a lot of different things and so does the min wax in the future. Okay, so thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, I've got a couple of more episodes on polymer clay and pressed flowers that uh, will be a little bit more fun. This was more like homework that we had to, had to do, and now we can start uh, playing. So hopefully you'll join me again in the future, and thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.